determine what the best thing to say here, but let me do the best I can. Um, 50 years ago, when I was 19, I was a freedom of mine. I'm actually 51 years now. And about two years ago, uh, we began to plan a reunion in Jackson, Mississippi, our 50th reunion. And uh, this was like a crazy time for me because I had forgotten about being a freedom rider. And I mean that. I, I, it was just something that happened a long time ago. I was involved in the civil rights movement until about 65, 66, but it was all. When I left the civil rights movement, I wasn't happy with why I left. There was a lot of bad things going on, a lot of tension. Uh, I was alienated from that. And I then, how, and, and what, what, before I was a freedom rider, I uh, was a juvenile delinquent. I was in reform school. After I was a freedom rider, I got into a lot of, I continued to do the wrong things until I was in my late 20s. And, but then my life changed. I ended up going to Columbia University School of Social Work. I was a commencement speaker. Uh, and now the executive director of a large agency that works with young people in East Holland and South Bronx. And when I went back down to Jackson when we were planning our reunion, I was overwhelmed just being there and remembering 50 years ago. And while I was down there, Owen Brooks, who's uh, the head of the Mississippi Veterans of Civil Rights Movement. He did an oral history. And after he did the history, he said, you know, Lou, if you weren't a freedom writer, you would have been dead or in jail by the time you were 25. And I realized he was right, but I had never thought of it. And I'm just saying, yeah, I never thought about it. And I never realized how important it was for me to have done what I did. Not that I did anything so fantastic, so, but I did stand up for what I felt was wrong that was being done to black people, but also what was being done to me. When I was a young man, my father committed suicide. I had a mother who was very abusive. I got into trouble from almost day one because I was fighting against what was being done to me. And no one could see that or care about it. No one thought about, well, when your father committed suicide, it must make life difficult when your mother's beating up every day. Maybe someone should have been, but no one did. And I grew up angry. I had a right to be angry. And I fought. But I didn't just fight for myself. For whatever reason, I went to a school where 99% of students were Jewish. My best friends were black and Puerto Rican. All right? And somehow, for whatever reasons I know it, I understood my own struggle and other people's struggle. And as I try to help other people, I help myself. So when I was in Jackson, and I started thinking about all this, I was overwhelmed with understanding that decision I made to be a freedom writer, for whatever reason, was a, was a decision that helped me become a social worker, go to Columbia, get my degree, and actually have a pretty damn good life considering what should have happened uh, if, I did, if I didn't. Realize that I have a connection to other people, and I have, a, I have a responsibility to other people, not just to myself. And a while back, LeBorn and I visited uh, at, a, at a Holocaust Museum in New Jersey, Brook, Brookdale or something. And we were meeting with young people there in large groups. And we started talking about social justice. And that, you know, their definition of social justice is very narrow. It was just about, say, black and Latino people not uh, being given a fair shake, not having social equality for blacks and Latinos, which obviously is important. But I challenged them. I said, you know, social justice goes beyond just that. It's LGBTQ young people. It is young people like me. And I told them about my life. Well, I was being beaten. No one in my family had to be. You think I'm the only kid who's being beaten? Uh, you, go, you walk into any school and you can see the young, uh, uh, or any daycare center, you can see a two or three year old, you know there's something wrong at all. Now, are any of us intervening to try to help those young people? What's happening in our country today? This insane poverty, so called poverty, and the insane crisis we're having because some people have so much and so many other people have so little. Is this wrong? 
And we, and we, had, we had a wonderful talk. And a lot, a lot of the young people started thinking differently. So for me, this, these last few years have been two best years of my life because of this. Because it's forced, it's, it's, I guess, gotten me to think about what I did, why I did it, and maybe appreciate my life in a, in a way that I never did before. And me, all people, you know, we, the one and I have gone to a lot of places together and separately, but it's when we meet people, like I'm, you all here are feeling the love in this room, and the respect, not, you shouldn't have respect for us, but respect for what we all care about and what we all do, that really makes, makes me feel good about being alive, despite what's going on in this country, and feeling that we can continue to make change, and most of all speak to our young people, people such as we have here. Because you guys gotta make it, you, it's, your, it's, your, it's your day now, and you gotta do what we did, because it's young people who make the change this time. Thank you.